I've been a genealogy librarian for five and a half years, well, more than that, volunteer-wise. Um, I've been a professional librarian for longer than I've been a genealogy librarian professional genealogist for longer than I've been a genealogy librarian. Uh, so I, my prior life was as an engineer uh, and uh, then as a manager for a little bit. So tonight um, we're going to go over what we have at the Kiefer Center that might entice you to make the trip up from Marion or wherever. And for those of you who are out of short travel distance, you can always email us and we can do some little bit of research for you um, trying to solve your problems as well. So we call ourselves the Kiefer Center because the B. Joan Kiefer Genealogy and Local History Center just takes too long to take talk about, especially when you add in our long library name of Huntington City Township Public Library. Because we're not a county library, we only cover uh, Huntington City, Huntington Township, and the village of Markle. Uh, so the mission of our room is to help us remember who we have been so that we can better understand who we are and decide who we want to be. To do that, we collect information about Huntington County families, social and governmental history, we focus on Huntington County and the surrounding counties, except Allen. And there's that little library up the road that makes us say, well, they've got everything. We don't need a whole lot. We also have a nice collection of the counties and states that fed Huntington area settlement, uh, local authors and selected Indian Indiana authors, as well as other genealogy or history of local interest. So if you wind up visiting us and you need something and we can get it for a reasonable price, we buy it for you. We have three full-time staff. Two of us have MLS degrees, which is a librarianship degree. Uh, I'm the only professional genealogist though, because I've been doing it for a long time and have done it for hire. Uh, the other two gals are very excellent researchers as well, but they just don't have the depth and breadth of genealogy experience that I do. Our focus is patron service. We're very fortunate to be able to sit with our patrons um, pretty much all day, unless we're really, really busy. Uh, we'll sit with you, we'll teach you, we'll show you, we'll point you in the right direction, leave you alone. Uh, we'll do it for you or with you up to a point. Um, we really do get involved in our patrons and their research. It makes the room fun. We're constantly making lists of helpful information, trying to improve the accessibility and discovery ability to discover what's in our collection. We're also constantly adding to our collection by cl clipping the current newspapers for births of bits Businesses opening, businesses closing, businesses expanding, our favorite pizza joint burning down. Um, we are, one of our full-time folks is focused on digitization. So, um, and she focuses on images and letters. So we have lots of pictures, lots of um, photographs of places around, uh, postcards, other things that are all up on Indiana memory. And a bunch of letters, uh, especially military letters, we try to transcribe and post those. We have a continuously revolving and hopefully growing again cadre of volunteers. They help us index and organize because there's so much in our room that it would take all three of us a couple of lifetimes in order to get it all done if we had to do it ourselves. Just to give you an idea of the scope, and we'll do a video tour later if we have time at the end. Um, we have over 8,300 items in the Kiefer Center with 200 in our branch library in Markle, which concentrates on Markle and Wells County, Rock Creek Township, Union Township, and Huntington County. Our birth and obituary card files started start in 1920 and go up to the last time our volunteer dropped some cards off for us to file. 
we have 25, I think, uh, file cabinets of what we call our family files. And these are partially cross-indexed. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Those digitizations that have been done, there's over 3,700 items under our library on Indiana memory. And the big announcement is that we're finally convinced and figured out how we can update with our library catalog online. So those of you who know worldcat.org, uh, which is the library catalog of catalogs, will event sometime this late summer, early fall, our collection will finally be updated so that you can see that the Huntington City Township Public Library has Huntington County histories, which you can't always see now, which is kind of fun. Um, we also have a growing presence on a website called thecleo.com, which is uh, free tours of driving, walking, biking tours. Uh, we started that during COVID and it's been going fairly well. So we're expanding it. We have a new tour going up sometime in the next couple of weeks for our summer reading program, which is focused on water in Hunting and things do it, dealing with water in Huntington County. Uh, we also have something in the concept stage called Encyclopedia of Huntington, at least that's my working title. Um, basically think of that as a history book, but on a web site. Um, we'll post all kinds of helpful things, including an obituary index. Uh, we're approximately 30% done doing our obituaries up to 2014, uh, which means we're just about done with the H's. We are also a family search affiliate. So uh, if you need to come in, if you can't get the things at home, you can come in and get to more uh, things from familysearch.org on through our website uh, connection. Uh, we have an agreement that we just signed with Family Search to do some digitization of various things in our room. What things are to be determined, but we're really excited about that. Uh, some of it will include some original records of uh, funeral homes. We'll have some additional books, uh, some other things. We also have a presence in the Family Search Wiki on the page for Huntington County Genealogy, where we've tried to link to all the major documents and we're adding things constantly. Uh, the county histories and plat maps, especially for that are available freely on the internet. We do have uh, microtext avail availability, uh, both microfilm and microfiche, mostly the film gets used. We have both digital, which are the newfangled things that allow you to do enhancements and clips and refinements to make sure you can see what you're looking at. Uh, downloading things to your flash drives, things like that. And we still have some analog machines as well. Uh, in microfilm and fish, the thing we mostly use it for is the local newspaper. But we also have some court cases. And for those of you who have been around the genealogy scene for a while, we still have our IGI microfiche. Um, subscriptions in the library are the usual suspects, uh, ancestry, and Heritage Quest, and then we enhance that with Fold3, uh, newspapers.com and Newspaper Archive, unfortunately have gotten so expensive that within the library, you can only access, we only have subscriptions to Indiana. However, the staff has, index, has uh, access to a full version of it, newspapers.com. So you can always ask us to search something um, specific outside of Indiana. And maybe we might be getting something similar for newspaper archives, but we'll see. Uh, copies are 20 cents page for black and white, 50 cents for color, free if you do it electronically with your phone or scan to a flash drive or what have you. And those prices are the same whether we do it or you do it. We've divided our collection into a bunch of different sub collections. We have, of course, the biggest thing is Huntington. We have genealogy by geography. So, you know, organized by state and then by county. 
Uh, those nonfiction, we have a fiction collection. We'll go through each of these a little bit, um, except for the museum things. That's what ephemera means, things. Uh, we try to discourage additions to our museum collection because those are harder to take care of and take up more space. Uh, we try and push those over to the museum if we think that's appropriate uh, so that we can focus on papers and images. And we also have an archives, uh, growing archives, uh, where we keep other things, including county records. Uh, we have the original marriage and will books. Uh, after the county digitizes or microfilms or whatever they do with them for their use, they give us the originals. That includes two different sets of marriage records. We have what we call the application series, which is indexed by the WPA up to 1920. And then we have the actual licenses. And you notice that the time periods are different for the application series than the licenses. Uh, and that has to do with what kinds of information are contained in them. Um, for those of you familiar with the Indiana marriage licenses, you frequently just see they got married when and by whom um, the applications include the additional information of who the parents are, where they were born, what their age is, where they're living. Um, after 1948, the license books include the application information. So that's why that series stopped. Uh, we also have all kinds of other cool things from the county. We have some probate bond books some original court case books, some property tax and personal tax, draft exemptions, town ledgers, fun stuff that's hard to get into, but if you need to spend some time to get into it, they can be very fun and get you lots of cool information. Uh, newspapers, we've got everything that exists on microfilm. Um, we're nearly current. I found out about a new series for our second newspaper a couple of years ago. So we're starting to catch up on that. Um, Newspapers.com has 85% of the Huntington papers. Newspaper Archive has 10%. Those do not overlap. Um, we do have two current papers, the Tab and the Herald Press. Uh, and we have those in print um, and can be used when needed. Uh, we have yearbooks for township, city, a lot of the university, not everything. We, they've got their own library, their own archives. We let them collect, focus on collecting that stuff. We're starting to collect elementary and middle, junior high. Um, we have a bigger collection than I thought we did, but uh, it's by nowhere near as complete as our township and city. Vital records and that kind of stuff. We have birth and death records, uh, the originals. We have images of the originals uh, from 1882 to 1920-ish. Um, birth and obituary announcements, like I said, in our file cabinet, our, our card catalog, local marriage records, local wills. Uh, the wills do require staff redaction after 1947, and that's a revolving um, you know, time-based year, so every year it gets later. So next year will be 1948, and that means we have to go through and put sticky notes over Social Security numbers and dollar amounts per our agreement with the courthouse. Um, other draft records that we have, we have some funeral home abstracts. We have an extensive list of extensive cemetery book collection for our county. There's over 90 cemeteries. We have everything in print or manuscript form uh, for all of those cemeteries. And we try to get updated things every few years for the active cemeteries. So that supplements uh, Find a Grave pretty well. More Huntington stuff, city directories, phone books, flat maps, Sanborn maps, um, staff access, 
for those, although there are online links for things prior to 1920, we were the only ones. We have three Huntington map series after 1920 um, that are not available online or anywhere else. Uh, because we're clipping the newspapers, we have business clippings, organizational, we also have organizational archives, both for current and past organizations. Um, not necessarily 100%, but we have lots of things. We also have add those in our clipping files if it's a significant thing, not, not if so-and-so had a meeting. Uh, we Last year, we created a gold, series of gold star binders for all wars for Huntington County. And uh, we also have some 1950s and 60s aerial maps, which are also hard to get into. But if you have, if we can finally get a volunteer to take that project on. Hopefully one of these days we'll be able to show so-and-so's farms picture. And that covers more than just Huntington County. Uh, it's everywhere the guy flew up. Flew, he was based out of Huntington County. And he covered northwest, northeast Indiana, and northwest Ohio. We get for the surrounding counties, we collect everything published or semi-published that we can get a copy of, that we can get our hands on. Um, this is just a quick look at what we've got cataloged. Except, like I said before, we leave Allen County to the experts up there. Um, we have about 100 items of Allen County, most of a book case, uh, county history, cemetery indexes, deed indexes, things like that. Uh, for state resources, um, in addition to the regular, a lot of the genealogy things, we have something for almost every county in Indiana. Uh, we do have a small collection of city directories from around the state, uh, focusing on the 50s to the 80s for the most part. Um, I'm trying to get a selective collection, maybe once a decade for the larger cities, at least uh, state laws, we're incomplete, but we have hard copies of the state laws starting in the 1830s. <laughs> These are not compiled. They're the actual, what we did this year, uh, state laws um, as they were put out. Uh, but they can be fun for and important for determining, um, you know, why can't I find a marriage record? Well, they didn't require them before X date. Why can't I find an obituary, you know? What were the laws regarding the um, management of cemeteries? What were the laws regarding inheritance and guardianship? Uh, what, when did orphanages start? Even, even some of the school laws sometimes uh, can illuminate things. We still have our print census indexes also. Uh, we have a complete run, I think, for the state of Indiana, as well as some of the other states. And we have a lot of other things for Indiana. Um, our family histories, like most genealogy rooms, are going to be a combination of published and unpublished things, sourced and unsourced, donated. We have uh, donated and or staff researched things as well in our file drawers. Uh, our larger items are only by primary sur surname. They're cataloged individually. There's nearly 1,700 of those. Um, our smaller files are in legal folders in those 24 door file cabinets. If it has a pedigree chart in the folder, we cross index the first page. So you can figure out what file in our 57 Smith files you might need to look at more easily than pulling all of them out. Uh, as the library has expanded physically, we were able to expand our room um, and got more permanent full-time folks. So we started doing clippings around 2000. Uh, so our clipping files only go back about that far. We also have a whole bunch of history files. These are not cataloged, but the topics are indexed. And that will be one thing that'll go up on our Huntington Encyclopedia when and if we finally get that up and going. We have about 1,100 subjects 
We have school files, we have church files, we have business files, we have ghost town files, you name it, we've got it, uh, all related to Huntington County. So that is the end of my prepared presentation. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions for a bit, and then uh, I will take you on a tour of the room. So do we have any questions? I know I ran it. I figured you guys can read the handout later, so I didn't need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the things, uh, but uh, I'm sure some of that sparked some questions, so speak up. everybody get the handout it was in the chat here hopefully everybody saw it i know somebody contacted us earlier and said am i going to talk about the underground railroad in huntington obviously i didn't so now i will uh the huntington county had a very small underground railroad presence um that we've been able to document anyway and uh, we do have a file on the underground railroad to one of those history files. Okay. Okay, let me uh, go over to my video and you can see what our room looks like. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Hi, welcome to the Kiefer Center. My name is Sarah Kirby. I'm the genealogy librarian here. Come on in. Let's get a tour. The first thing you'll notice when you come through is you get a doorbell. That lets us know if we're in the back stacks that you've come in and we can greet you. We also have on either side, we have some old books and some exhibits, and we have a train exhibit, which the little kitties really like, and the adults too, because Huntington used to be a big train town, especially for the Erie Railroad. As we proceed into the room, you will see our reference desk. This is where you can sign in and where somebody should greet you when you are it, <laughs> when you're in the room. So this is Kristen. She's one of the other two ladies that work in the room full time with me. And off to our left, we have the microfilm room. So if you need to research our newspapers, this is where you do it after 1929. On our right, we have a little museum area where you can just browse and kill some time as well as handouts for uh, some of the frequent activities or how to do some research and things like that. As you probably know, if you've visited a lot of genealogy libraries or such, we like to collect obituaries and that's what our old library catalog cards get, files get used for. We also have a birth index. So anything that has appeared in the Huntington newspaper since 1920 is clipped or at least typed onto a card as to a reference so that we could find it quickly when you're looking for your ancestors and other relatives. Our copy machine is available for you to use yourself or for us to help you use. We can also use it as a scanner which saves you copy costs if you bring a flash drive. Scans are free. Copies are 20 cents for black and white. And if you just look around the room, you see we have a bunch of tables for you to use, a couple of public access computers, uh, some tabletop electrical outlets that also charge your phone so you don't have to crawl on the floor and then you see our big collection in the back and we're going to go take a look at what our how our collection is subdivided. A 
along this wall that has starts out with a couple of maps of the county and the city and has all kinds of art about the county and city. We have all of the county and city genealogy information that's in published form or in at least in some kind of a manuscript form. So our county histories, our cemetery directories, some church records, city directories, and miscellaneous other things that we might have that would be of use to you. Then down the next couple of aisles, um, starting in the low end, we have our plat maps for the Huntington County. And then uh, on the other side, we have newspapers for Huntington. These are more recent papers. These are for folks to browse. Um, unfortunately, there aren't digital versions available for our papers, although we can sometimes search more recent things if they appeared in the tab, which is one of our uh, local papers. So these, the rest of these two aisles are arranged geographically. Uh, we have a helpful map and for the United States, as well as a couple for some of the states where we have large collections that can help you find which Dewey number your counties or states might be at. Uh, these are the, what we call the books with names. So they're the county histories, the genealogies, the cemetery records for various different locales. Then in the middle, we have our county archives collection. We have original wills, original marriage records. The marriage records go up to last year. The wills are not quite that recent and we do have to do some um, redacting of the more recent ones with our agreement with the county. But when the county, you don't have to go to the courthouse, you can come here or have us look it up for you. We'd be glad to digitize that for you and send it to you for free. Because when we respond to email questions, it doesn't cost you anything if we send you electronic copies. The next little collection we have over here on the left is probably something you're not going to use, but it's kind of fun. This is our fiction collection. Um, some of it is just really old books like the Dumas series, the th author of the Three Musketeers. Uh, they are books that would have been in our library when it first opened in 1913. We also have our Indiana and Huntington authors uh, when we collect those particular books and add them to our collection, they wind up here. On the right side of the aisle, at least at this section, we have our school yearbooks. Like many of the counties in Indiana, we started out with one-room schools, then we wound up with township schools. Now we have a city county, uh, single county school district. We collect yearbooks for the high schools, for all those townships that had them. We collect the current books. We have some of the annual reports that list teachers and sometimes graduate graduates. And we also have an extensive clipping file on the schools and school districts, which we have, one of my volunteers has kindly been spending many years organizing and expanding and has put in binders for us so that they're right near the yearbooks for that particular school district. Then we have bio general biographies and group biographies of either famous or interesting individuals. Uh, those are going to be down here a little bit further. Uh, group biographies are, are just that. Uh, we've got one. Where am I finding it? My brain is going here. Women in Congress. So all the women who have served in Congress, their short little biographies. We've got a century of German influence on medicine in Indiana. So these are going to be medical doctors who have a German uh, ethnic background and other groups of people that you wouldn't find in a family history section. But the biographies, if it happens to be one of your people that was in that particular group or is one of those individuals, um, 
then you're going to find their information here as opposed to within our genealogy files. Then we start our regular Dewey, which is our topical files, files on religion, files on uh, the Erie Canal, I'm sorry, the Wabash and Erie Canal, the Erie Railroad, uh, Civil War in Indiana, all, all kinds of statistics that might help illustrate your genealogy and make things more interesting. As we get back in the middle here, we had our family history section. So these are the larger contributed or purchased family histories. They can either be published or non-published. They're organized by primary surname. So this is a traditional arrangement in a genealogy library. Um, and in addition to that, we have from way down there where the gray file cabinets start to way down there in the middle of the gray file cabinets, a total of 20 cabinets have contributed family histories or family histories that have been um, done by the genealogy librarians here or clipping files. We actually still clip the newspaper in our library for significant events like 75th anniversaries or 100th birthdays. Uh, you, get a, you get a file and we put you in there. Uh, we also have a very unique thing that I've never seen at any other library. These files are partially cross-indexed in this card index. So if the genealogy file has a pedigree chart, the names on the first page of that, surnames on the first page of that pedigree chart are cross-indexed here. So for instance, I pulled out Sturdivant and it says, go see Emily charts and notes. So evidently, a Sturdivant married into the Emilys or vice versa, but pro probably a Sturdivant married into the Emilys. So this can give you some clues, especially if you have some of those common surnames, which of the 55 Smith files that we have do you need to go look for? Pick one of your non-Smith relatives that married into the Smiths, and this may help shorten your search. And finally, and we just won't go back there for time, but we do also have organizational archives and history and topic files that uh, cover some of the social history aspects of Huntington County uh, that we use to research whatever topic you might have of interest in our area. And that concludes our tour today. Hope that inspires you to come visit our friendly little large Kiefer Center. We're just 30 minutes from Fort Wayne and we can sit down and help you or leave you to yourself. Have a good day. All right, so that's everything I have prepared. Does anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. I appreciate the information. I don't know if anybody is here tonight. I mean, I've been to the Huntington Library. It's been a while since I've been there, a couple, of, two, a couple, three years. Um, but they do have a lot of information. If you're uh, people were in Huntington, they're probably in there somewhere in the for for in Huntington County. Yeah, and and the Warren Warren newspaper covers a lot of Grant County. Um, the Warren newspaper is I didn't mention uh, it is completely digital. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the Warren Public Library uh, website or if you go to the Family Search Wiki page for Huntington County, I think if not, I'm going to make it true either today or tomorrow. There will be a link to uh, the digital archives of the Warren paper. Um, the main archives runs up to about 2010, I think. And then uh, when that owner sold it, then the current archives is, is elsewhere.
but for the historical archives, um, it's all out there. So there's a lot of grant county because there's a lot of people that go back and forth. I'm always in the grant county database looking for people and vice versa, I imagine. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover, especially you know, the ones there on that side of it, just on the county line there around the Warren, Van Buren area, a lot of crossover there. And that's where my family, <laughs> back and forth, Warren and Huntington and Exactly, my ancestor founded the town of Warren. So I, my family just stuck there in that area. <laughs> a lot of, so it I makes did, researching easier. You don't have to travel as far. I, I really don't. They, they all the families, most of my mother's side and my father's side pretty much stuck here in Huntington, Grant County, Wells. <laughs> so it's pretty, and got here early. So it's been pretty easy not to go places. But yeah, one of the first things I did when I started working at Marion was go over and spend the day with Joan in the Huntington, in the Huntington uh, Library there in the Indiana room there. And she, uh, she was like our Betty. She, she, you mentioned a name and she told you, you need this, 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 and this, and this, and there's your family stuff. And uh, <laughs> she told you where they were from and where they were, where they were related to. And uh, uh, it was. Yeah. I wish I had a memory like that. Mine doesn't work that way. No. <laughs> it's, it's amazing when you find someone like that that, uh, that has that information. So, um, what is the most used resources there in the room? Uh, obituary, marriage, and yearbooks. Those are the, the three things that get used all the time. Um, our county histories constantly in plat, plat maps as well. Um, we're frequently in the Sanborn maps. So when people come in and ask, you know, where, when was my house built? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get that quite a bit too. <laughs> so sometimes between the city directories and the plat maps, we can narrow, if it's inside the city limits, at least we can narrow it down. Or if it's in one of the other villages, uh, Warren, Andrews, Markle, or Roanoke, that happens to have a, a Sanborn map and it covers their part of town, then we're in like Flint. But uh, yeah, those, those get used the most. Uh, but we're all over the place all, all the time, depending on what the question is. You never know what question you're going to get. Nope. <laughs> well, sometimes you do. When there's a fire in Pizza Junction. Yeah. When was Pizza Junction built? You know, how long has it been in operation? Oh, and by the way, did you know it used to, it burned once before? Oh, so, okay. not as not when it was Pizza Junction, but when it was an antique store. Oh, okay. And then, and what was it anyway? Well, it was the baggage depot. It wasn't the passenger depot. It was where the the major shipping took place. And then, if you were a passenger, just across the street, there's another depot that uh, you would have stayed at with your lug your personal luggage. Um, so that was for the the freight shipping. Right. The local uh, questions are always interesting when they remember something from when they were a kid and want to try and find it. And we had one this week, and he swore it was from in 1990, and it was 1940. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. memory. Well, we we had one this week where the person was asking for a copy of a poem that they paid to have published in the paper, and they swore it was in this month and this year, and we expanded it one month either way, and two of us took a look at it and spent, you know, a couple, three days looking through the newspaper and never did find it. So, yeah. oh well. So we can't always answer the questions, but sometimes we get lucky. Uh, sometimes we know exactly what to do. Like with Pizza Junction, we had a file already on, mm -hmm. on the building and, and uh, we just had to pull it out and have it ready um, for anybody who came in with questions. And then, you know, with our experience in, in research and things, we go outside of Huntington County and do all things across the state. 
I even helped somebody get a marriage certificate from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, a couple of years oh, ago. Wow. So well, it's great. easier if it's in English or local, but we can sometimes manage even if it isn't. Yeah. yeah. Anybody have any questions or anything for Sarah? Our Genealogy Society meets the first Wednesday of the month at 6.30. Uh, most of the time we do dual Zoom and in-person. Um, we don't meet as a society in July, August, December, January, so hot or cold months. But uh, we usually have one program in the summer at least. We are having a program on July 7th on Great Lakes passenger travel. Uh, so if any of you are interested in Great Lakes passenger travel uh, and or had sailors or anything like that, it looks like it's gonna be a really good program. The National Museum of the Great Lakes is gonna put it on for us. Okay, great. And you might be eligible for LEUs. Okay, that's probably very <laughs> Those we're the only two that need those. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is always good. So I appreciate it. So, okay. Well, if anybody have any questions or? If not, uh, my email is on the handout. Uh, you can always go to our, I will go to our homepage. Um, I'm going to go over to. This. So this is the library homepage. If you go to site, map, and then B. Joan Kiefer, you get access to our, see a picture of the room again, my ugly face, contact information, the databases that we have access to. Um, if you click on the family search page link, eh, where'd it go? There it is. I'll go over to the Huntington County page in the wiki, uh, which has links to all the local histories and maps and gazetteers. Uh, our homepage also has links to our Indiana memory, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah. So click here and go out to Indiana memory and you can search for pictures. All kinds of cool stuff. Uh oh, Kingsland. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, it was a very tragic accident in 1950 and uh, it killed a couple dozen people. In Wells County. In Wells County, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Sarah, so much for joining us tonight. Uh -huh.